I congratulate the Veggie Channel for doing this kind of work, and that is basically educating the public. And that's what we most need. We've got enough scientific information now to know that we can actually make good decisions for ourselves and others, and the Veggie Channel is doing exactly the right thing. My name is Colin Campbell, and uh, presently I'm a professor emeritus at Cornell University in the United States. I'm a research scientist and lecturer and author, and I have spent now almost 59 years uh, in scientific research, especially on the question concerning the relationship of food with health. A fairly dramatic effect, it seems like to me, more than I had expected. Uh, good effect, I think, and hope. It basically was a story of my career in research, because in part, I, I think this is interesting because I started out from the beginning at a ver with a very different idea than what I now have. And it's really, more than anything, demonstrates that nutrition, actually has a, a much stronger effect on our health than what I think we ever realized. We can use food now, the right kind of food, and that's whole, plant-based. Well, that kind of food has a, a, a tremendous ability, not only to prevent future diseases, but also to treat existing disease. No, I mean, I, being in science, I, obviously I was working on a very specific problem in the beginning, having to do with protein intake and its relationship with cancer. That's where I started. But as you dig deeper into that question, it keeps going like this. And now it turns out that from my perspective, the effect is dramatic, not just on creating our own health, but also uh, restoring uh, you know, and, and, and resolving some problems in our society. Like, for example, the question concerning the environment. The connection between food and the environment is now becoming of interest to a lot of people. And again, it's, uh, it's more significant than anyone ever realized. And the relationship of food to the environment is very similar, it's with, very consistent with the relationship between food and personal health and many other things in our society. I think if I were to pick out one thing that I would like to emphasize now is that we need to have a new definition for nutrition. That may sound a little bit uh, uh, academic, but it's not. We think of nutrition in terms of individual nutrients, what they do. That's not the main point. The main point is when nutrients within food, and there's countless nutrients in food, almost infinite numbers of chemicals in food that do this, but they all work together. I call it whole or holistic. It really works together, and I, I think I can describe it, I think we can describe it now in scientific terms. And when we think of it that way, the result that we now see is, is so dramatic. It's, as I say, it's much more dramatic than taking one nutrient at a time and trying to figure out what, what, what we're doing with it. Traditional medicine, and also traditional research in my area, has been what I call a reductionist approach. We examine the parts very, very carefully. We focus on the parts. Some of my colleagues might spend all their lifetimes developing their reputation working on let's say one enzyme or something like that. Um, that's important to understand that kind of information, I think. But the important part that gets left out is the whole. What is the connection between everything? And that, that's the point. So talking about the whole, we learn so much more in terms of what it can mean to human health. The practice of medicine also is very interesting. The practice of medicine is focused on parts, just attacking one symptom of disease at a time with one chemical. We call them drugs. That's not the best way to treat our health. In fact, in the practice of medicine, 
they ignore nutrition. Nutrition really is the whole, or it should be the whole. And so I just think that the way we do research, the way we practice medicine, the way we think about food in the large public is not very good. We've got to begin to change our thinking about it and recognize that all of these things work together to create health for everyone and all kinds of health. Well, making books and making videos is, is a fir good first step, but we can do more. I think having conferences like here, for example, is useful. I also think that we need to think about doing this at the grassroots level. I used to believe that coming from the top down was interesting, possibly good, because I worked near the top in policy development and so forth. But in order for there to be change, We've got to work at the grassroots level, everyday people, because then when they get to know it, they can do something. And the best way to get people to know it, I think, get a group of people together, provide the food for them, let's say just for 10 days or maybe 15 days. Measure some medical indicators in the beginning, measure it afterwards. Let the people see for themselves. They, if, you, if you do it right, the effects are dramatic. And they are consistent with what we see in the long term. You know, for people, for example, who might be doing this for their lifetime. So that's good education. That's really good education because they get to know this. The first book was The China Study, to which you refer. But uh, I wrote a second book that came out in 2013. It's called Whole, spelled W-H-O-L-E, which is, of course, a descriptive of the adjective holistic. The second book was an attempt to try to answer the question that many people ask me after reading a China study, how come I haven't heard this before? And so I wrote that book in order to educate myself in a way that might be able to be helpful to understand that too. I could have written a book about all of the corporate things that go on, you know, to try to repress this information, but I didn't especially want to do that. I wanted to look at it in a larger context and more in depth. We have children, and we have several children who are working in this area. Our entire family live this lifestyle. And uh, just to mention some, my oldest son is now making a movie that'll be out in next July. You may know the movie Forks Over Knives. This is a follow-up to Forks Over Knives. Forks Over Knives has been the number one movie documentary in the United States of all categories for the last three years. That tells the story of what I think we were learning. This next movie that our son has now just finished is, 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 is a story to try to also answer that question. How come we haven't heard this before? And I think it actually might do better than even Forks Over Knives. The major reason for us not knowing has to do with hierarchy, authority, politics, economics. And so the story that is told there, I think, is quite dramatic. And I think it will do very well. So that's a movie. It's named Plant Pure Nation. Our second child, um, a girl, Leanne Campbell, uh, she did her doctorate in education. She worked in the Peace Corps. She works in Latin America a lot. And uh, she works on concepts of cultural exchange, now bringing in food into this. So she wrote the book, The China Study Cookbook. Now she's sponsoring a conference in the Dominican Republic next week, trying to integrate ideas about food with environment. A second son, a third child, is the youngest, who now is a physician. He's the one that co-authored the book with me, The China Study. He's coming out with a new book. 
that's now done, called the Campbell Plan. And he's a doctor of family medicine. He has a faculty position at a university medical school. And he's getting an opportunity, I think, to do something really big with that. And then we have two other sons. Our oldest son's wife has a new book, new cookbook coming out. So we've got uh, many different projects. When I say we, I'm talking about our family. And I continue to lecture. Uh, my youngest son has been lecturing. Our daughter has been lecturing. She's in education. She works in very poor communities in Latin America. And she also really came to this idea of holism by herself. So it really works very nicely together when you think about education and think about health.